Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, our Father's house singers. Amen. Praise God. That was absolutely phenomenal. Amen. Y'all give them a hand this morning. That's the best y'all do. That's the best y'all do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you'll turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of James. Chapter 3. We're going to be talking about your mouth. Go back to the main screen there. Where it says, where it shows Pastor Jeff out. Right here. Our mouth and God's power. Do you know God's power lies on your tongue? Do you know that God's power lies in your mouth? Do you know that the power of God lies in the words you speak out of your mouth? Do you know you set the course of your life by the way you speak this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> James chapter three, praise God. Now, now we can get if we can get our mouth like that for God. That's what we need. But most of, most of us has got it for the world like that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. James chapter three and verse eight. It says, "But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison." I'm gonna read that one more time. I want y'all to get that in your spirit this morning. I want y'all to understand the power of your words this morning. It says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Verse 9 says, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and curses. My brother, these things not, not ought to be so. It says we ought not be doing that, folks. It says that we shouldn't bless and curse out of the same mouth. It says that we shouldn't, hallelujah, talk good and bad out of the same mouth. Wow. Verse 11, it says, Can a fountain uh, send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter water? Can you cut on the spigot and get sweet and bitter water out of that spigot? It says, Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries? Have you ever seen a fig tree bearing, uh, bearing olive berries? It says, or either a vine fig, so, so can no fountain yield both salt and fresh water. So you can't get, you can't get salt and fresh water out of the same spigot. It said, who, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge amongst you? Let him show out of, listen, good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. Back to verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. <coughs> Listen, folks, there is no area that's harder to control in your, in your life than your mouth. No man can tame the tongue. You may be a great person. You may help other people. You may do all kinds of good deeds. You may go to the hospitals and visit. You may go to the rest homes and visit. You might go and feed the poor. You might do all these good works. But see, what we do, we'll turn right around and let the words of our mouth betray the intentions of our heart. You may have good intentions in your heart, but when you speak the wrong things out of your mouth, it negates everything, all your good intentions in your heart. See, your tongue and your, and your spoken word are powerful. And what it does, it sets, it sets the course for your life. See, we try to hide our self-ambitions. We try to hide who we are. We try to hide our secret sin. But every time you open your mouth, you reveal it. You reveal what's inside of you every time you speak. I can hang around with you for a few minutes, and I can tell if you are, are, are a godly person or you are a worldly person. I can hang around with you for a few minutes, and it don't take me long to tell whether you really for God or you ain't for God. See, your words is going to reveal what's in your heart. Listen to me this morning, folks. That's, this is why we need Jesus to sanctify us from the inside out. We need Jesus to transform us from the inside out. We say to ourselves, well, Pastor, if I can't tame my tongue, what's in the point of me even trying? If I can't tame my tongue, what's the point of you even teaching this? See, even if we can't totally tame our tongue, listen, you should try to change what you're saying and, and get it to line up with the Word of God. 
Even though we often say the wrong things in our mouth, we can change that by learning the Word of God. We can change that by staying in the Word of God. You can change your confession this morning the closer you get with God. Listen to me. The, what, the, the words that we start speaking out of our mouth is, going to, is what's going to bring change in our life. The words that come out of your mouth is going, is going to determine whether you're going to change that addiction or you ain't going to change that addiction. The words that come out of your mouth is going to determine whether you change that marriage or you don't change that marriage. The words that come out of your mouth is going, to, is going to determine if you're going to be blessed or you're going to be cursed. It's all about the words that's coming out of your mouth. Praise God. I'm going to get ahead of myself. i got to go slow here. Listen, here's the thing this morning. If you really want to this morning, I mean you really want to do what's right in your life and use your mouth for a godly person, then the way to do that is by spending more time with God. See, if you don't ever spend a proper time with God, the words of your mouth are going to be the world's mouth, uh, the world's words. The words of your mouth are going to be opposite of what God's saying. The words of your mouth are going to be condemning you every time you speak. See, even, praise God. <laughs> See, the reason you speak the way you do is because you, you, you entertain the world more than you entertain the Word. The reason you speak the way you do is because you watch TV more than you watch the Bible. The reason you speak the way you do is because you give more attention to what people think about you than what God thinks about you. Come on, somebody. You've got to get your spirit right this morning. And you've got to put this word down in your spirit. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, you've got to fill your heart with the word of God so that was what will come out of your mouth. If your heart is not filled with the word of God, the word of God is not going to come out of your mouth. Your mouth, listen to me. i got to get this code up. Oh, i I got, I got to loosen up here a little bit. I feel tight. Feel a little bit of pressure. I'm praise God. Holy Ghost, fill me right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, wash me right now in the name of Jesus. I receive power from on high right now to preach this word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Listen to me, folks. Yeah, whatever's coming out of your mouth is showing me what's in your heart. Go to Ma uh, Matthew chapter twelve. In verse thirty-four. This is Jesus speaking. He says, "Old generation of vipers." How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever's coming out of your heart, uh, out of your mouth, is what your heart is full of this morning. Verse thirty-five it says, "A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things." But I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words of your mouth shall you be justified, and by the words of your mouth shall you be condemned. Listen to me this morning, folks. You've got to get serious about what you're speaking out of your mouth. You've got to understand you changed residence when you got born again. You've got to understand when you came to Jesus and confessed your sins to Jesus, He transferred you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Listen, folks, but see, you're still speaking the words of the kingdom of darkness. Even though He's transferred you or transformed you into the kingdom of light, you're still speaking the words of the words of the world. You're still speaking the words of the kingdom of darkness. It wouldn't be no different than me or you going to China getting sent to China and you never learning their language. Listen to me folks. You never learning the Chinese language. Do you know how hard it would be for you to operate if you didn't know their language? Well, you, you know how hard it would be for you to go out and buy stuff and to live and to do different things and to receive things uh, from, from that country if you didn't know that language? Well folks, it's the same way with the kingdom of God. See, you still speaking the kingdom of darkness. You try to walk in the kingdom of light, speaking the kingdom of darkness. See, it don't work like that way. If you want to receive out of the kingdom of light this morning, you've got to start speaking the word of God this morning. That's how you receive from the kingdom of light this morning. You can't keep talking to uh, your old ways. You can't keep talking the way you was before you got born again. You can't keep hanging out with these people you was before you got born again and think that you're going to change. You've got to learn how to operate in the kingdom of light, and that's going to take speaking the kingdom of uh, the words of God out of your mouth. Somebody say amen to that. See, if you will pray about this and you get serious about this and you do a study in this area, God's going to do the work that needs to be done. All of this comes by submitting to His Word. All of this comes by accepting His Word. All of this comes by yielding to His authority. But see, our problem is this morning, we don't want to yield to the authority of God. We don't want to yield to the Word of God. We still want to live life the way we want to live it, but we want God to bless us. We still want to walk, uh, we still want to walk in our own ways and think God's going to give us victory. It don't work 
work like that, folks. You've got to change the way you speak this morning. You've got to change the words that's coming out of your mouth this morning. It says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. In other words, he flings forth good words. He speaks good words. He speaks kind words. He speaks gentle words. But a man out of the bad treasure of his heart, he bringeth forth bad things. In other words, he's always rude to people. He's always treating people bad. He's always gossiping about people. He's always being critical of people. And all this is what he's been putting in his heart, folks. You've got to change what you've been putting in your heart. You have been transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Listen, you've got to learn the language of the kingdom of light. You can't keep speaking the language in the kingdom of darkness and think you're going to receive out of the kingdom of light. It don't work like that. You've got to learn God's language this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. How do you learn God's language? You do this by yielding to his authority this morning. In other words, we subject ourselves to the word of God and we agree with the word of God. We yield to the word of God and we allow the Holy Spirit to condition us so we can adopt God's plan in our life. We allow the Holy Spirit to start guiding us so we can adopt God's plan in our life. I just come across a situation yesterday where I was mistreated and boy did I want to let them know about it. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, speak my word. Just speak my word. You speak my word over this situation, you want to change. That person that was treating me rude, that person that was treating me unkind, I just started speaking the love of God. I started speaking God's language in that darkness. I shut that up. I started speaking God's language in that bad situation. And the next thing you know, that whole situation turned around where they wouldn't even rude. They wouldn't even speak to me no more. It shut them down. It shut them down. See, that's because, see, I understood if I'm going to operate in the kingdom of light, I've got to speak the kingdom of light's language. I can't speak the kingdom of darkness language just because somebody's mistreating me don't give me a right to mistreat them. If you are a son or daughter of God this morning, the, the Bible says that we're to walk in love no matter what happens in our life. The Bible says we're to pray for our enemies no matter how people treat us. The Bible says that we're supposed to treat people with kindness no matter how the situation seems to be unfolded. See, that's when you understand you're speaking God's language. The Holy Spirit will... He will prompt you and He will adopt you and condition you into His plan. But how does this happen? Through surrendering to God. You've got to learn to speak the language of God. You've got to learn to speak the language of the kingdom you live in now. Praise God. See, you're still trying to hold on to the old kingdom and God has transformed you into the new kingdom, but you won't renew your mind in the old kingdom in order to get into the new kingdom. You still live in it. Oh, child. You still, you come to church every week. You pay your tithes every week. You read your Bible every day. But you still speaking the words of the word. That's right, right, right. And you're trying to figure out why, ain't they, why my life ain't working out for me. It's what's coming out of your mouth. Right. <laughs> Listen to me. See, we allow the Holy Spirit to condition us so we can adopt the God's plan in our life. That is the only way you're ever going to change uh, change in your life. That's the only way you're ever going to transform your life into a good position. As long as we're not careful with the words that we speak, as long as we don't train ourselves in the Word of God, as long as we stay undisciplined with what we spend our time doing, the power of God cannot show up in your life. Amen. Listen to me. When you got born again, God gave you a gift. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Praise but God gave you a gift. He gave you an anointing. He gave you power. He gave you His presence. But guess what? You can't operate in it because of the way you're talking. You can't even receive the free gift because of the way you're talking. Mm -hmm. I knew that'd be quite crazy, God. <laughs> see, 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 we think, see, and listen, and see, some people's going to take this out of this. We think we can make a decision and just go home and not say nothing else and things are going to change. Listen to me. You've already set a course in motion by the way you've been speaking. So just shutting up ain't going to change nothing. Just quitting talking ain't going to change nothing. Just because you don't say it no more ain't going to change nothing because you done spoke that thing. You done set your life into, into a course. What you got to do, you got to get in the Word of God and you got to start speaking the Word of God over what you done spoke in order to change that course in your life. Or you're going to keep going down the same path that you're on. See, nothing is going to change until we ask God to pour Himself into our hearts 
Nothing's going to change until we desire his word more than we desire anything else. Nothing's going to change until we desire his way of doing things over our own evil desires. You say, preacher, I'm not as bad as I used to be. Well, praise God, there's still a lot of room for growth in your life. And folks, until you start speaking the word of God, you're going to stay defeated in that thing that's held you your whole life. Listen to me. Maybe it's addiction. Maybe it's a sex thing. Maybe it's an anger problem. Maybe it's a bitterness problem. Until you change the way you speak, you're going to be stuck in that thing. Amen. I'm going to make this live. Praise God. Glory to God. See, listen to me. It has to be through giving yourself totally under the control of the Holy Spirit. It has to come from your surrender to God. See, it's when we understand and accept His authority in our life, that's when real change takes place in the areas that's unpleasing to God. See, you don't want to accept the authority of God. You're still rebellious this morning. You're still full of rebellion this morning. You don't want to accept God's word. Why? Because you're going to have to change the way you live. You're going to have to lay some stuff down in your life. You're going to have to quit going to the hockey town. You're going to have to quit doing all these other stuff in your life. You ain't going to be able to talk to that guy because you out like you really want to talk to him. God has transformed you out of the darkness into the light. You're not that person no more. But see, the words that you're speaking out of your mouth are untrained, and it's still, you're still trying to hold on to that old person. Why? Because you have an authority problem. You have a problem with authority this morning. You wonder why your kids have a problem with authority. It's because the kids learn from the parents. You got a problem with authority this morning. Somebody say amen to that. There's no way we'll get amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Listen to me. See, I've been through this over and over. And see what will happen in your life. If you don't do it through the power of God, you'll actually get worse instead of better. Listen to me. If you try to do this on your own, I can promise you that nothing is ever going to change in your life. You are not equipped to do this through your own, own, with your own willpower. Only the power of God and spending time with God and reading His Word and getting in His presence and practicing to be in His presence, listen, is the only thing that's going to change the course of your life and change the, the, the things that's been causing you to miss God's plan for your life. And what's been causing you to miss God's plan for your life is very simple, folks. It's what you're saying. It's what's coming out of your mouth this morning. See, we can't change by the works of the flesh. And that's what we try to do. We try to will ourselves change in our life. You're never going to change by the works of the flesh. The only way you can ever have real change in your life is by fully surrendering to the Holy Spirit. And that means you're going to have to change the way you talk. It means you're going to have to change the places you go. It means you're going to have to change how you act. It means you're going to have to change your daily game plan. God is telling us this morning we need to make a game plan for victory in our life. But see, we ain't making a game plan. We just got saved, and we ain't doing nothing. We ain't doing nothing to renew our mind, and we're still stuck in the same place we was. And before long, the devil's going to snatch you right back out, and you're going to be right back in that addiction again. The Bible says over Proverbs 26 and 11, praise God. This thing is vibrating, man. I'm calling it. Praise God. As a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his father. You ever seen a dog throw up and go back and eat it? You ain't never seen it come to my house. <laughs> Praise God. Listen to me. But a dog will vomit and he will return and eat that vomit. Why? Because he's done nothing inside of himself to change. A cocaine addict will lay down the cocaine, but if he don't do something about the words of his mouth, if he don't do something about the condition of his heart, if he don't do something about the way he's been living and change according to the Word of God and come up under to the, uh, well, to the authority of the Word of God, listen, it might be all right for a week, it might be all right for two weeks, it might be all right for a month, but that thing's going to draw him back in. Just like a dog returns to that vomit, a fool's going to return to that folly. The only thing that's going to keep you from returning to that thing is changing the Word of God is the way you speak. You've got to start speaking what God says. You've got to start agreeing with what God says. Praise God. Glory to God. See, we, see what we need to do this morning, folks. We just need to slow down this morning and renew our minds in the Word of God and stop before you just say anything you want to say. 
Stop before you speak. Yeah. When you run into a situation in your life, it's easy to say when you ain't feeling good, I'm sick. <laughs> no, what you need to say, by His stripes I'm healed. Yeah. That's the only thing that's going to bring change to the sickness in your life. Yeah. Yeah. You might say, well, you know, I ain't got enough money to pay my bill. Quit saying that. God didn't say that. That's right. God says I will supply all your needs. Quit saying, well, I can't quit doing this. Right. Quit saying that. Because what you're doing, you are creating when you're saying that. Right. Every time you say that, you're giving the, the, the death ain't more power in your life. But instead of saying, I can't quit doing that, start saying, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. It's all the words that come out of your mouth. See, it's how you speak over that situation in your life. See, our words are either going to make us a victorious this morning or they're going to cause us to be defeated this morning. It's time we come under the control of the Holy Spirit and say what brings life to us and stop saying the things that cause us to be defeated. Mm -hmm. You say, praise God, that boy ain't going to mount enough. He's going to be on drugs his whole life. Guess what? He's he going to be on drugs his whole life. That's exactly, nothing's never going to change. Until you change the words out of your mouth. Right. See, when you're born again, praise God. When you're born again and you see something ain't right in your life, you see something ain't right in your relationship, you see something ain't right in your mind, you, see, you speak the word of God over that thing. That's right. And you continue to speak the word of God until that thing changes. It's got to change. It can't stay the way it is. It's got to change. Why? Because now I'm speaking the word of God over that situation. Quit calling it what it is and start calling it what God calls it. Hallelujah. So you've got to understand you and God are partners and you ain't going to be able to do this without Him. Listen to me. God is not going to let you get the victory without Him. Praise God. He ain't going to let you get the victory without Him. But see, when He gives you the victory, that's when you give Him the glory. Amen. That's when the power of God starts increasing in your life. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, you have to get so involved in the Word of God, you have to sow this Word so, so deep into your heart, so deep in your spirit, that you dominate the outer man. Wow. You dominate what your flesh wants to do yeah. through the Word of God. Right. Yeah. Word of God makes your inner man strong. The world makes your outer man strong. You've got to make your inner man stronger than your outer man so you can speak the Word of God over your life so you can call things like you want them. It says, call those things to be not as what? As though they were. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. See, your inner man has to be stronger than your outer man. How do we do this? We do this by acknowledging his authority in our lives. That's the whole problem this morning, folks. You were bad this morning. You don't want to listen to God this morning. You still want to, you want God's blessings but you still want to live the way you want to live. You think you can dibble and dabble with sin. You think you can dibble and dabble with your past. And see, you, you don't even understand that you've been transformed from that past into the kingdom of life. You now live in the kingdom of life, but you're still speaking the, king, the kingdom of darkness, but you're standing in the kingdom of life. And God can't do nothing with you until you start agreeing with Him. It says, for to agree, that thing shall be done to you. See, if, if, you, if you try to do it on your own, what you would do if you could do it on your own, you would take all the credit. See, you've got to understand God has got to get all the glory for His work in your life. Amen. Let me find the scripture here. I don't know if I got it up there, Larry. Do I got Ephesians in there? Um, Ephesians 2 and 10? No. You've got to understand who you are this morning. No, it ain't even there. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, it is too. Yeah, it is too. I'm in Colossians. Praise God. Praise God. See, this is what you do, folks. You know what the Word says that you can't find where it is? Get in that thing and search that thing out. Find out where that Word says that and then agree with that Word. Right. right. It says, For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are His workmanship. God has already got this thing figured out. He's already worked this thing out in our life that we should do good works which God hath ordained that we should walk therein. 
So what he's saying is, I've already paved the way for you. The only thing you've got to do is agree with what I'm saying. The only thing you've got to do is get that word down in your heart and start speaking my word out of your mouth. The problem a lot of us have is we see we will go out here and maybe we stop doing something for a month. We think we got the victory. And then we start boasting about how I done quit doing that. But you ain't used God's power to quit doing it. You just quit doing it because you're sick and tired of who you was. Come on, I'm going to deliver somebody on this right here. <laughs> Listen to me right here. You just quit doing it because you're sick and tired of who you was. You didn't want to be that person no more, so you willed yourself. So you've been, you've been clean for a couple weeks now, and you ain't used in a couple weeks. But if you don't learn to speak what God's Word says over that situation, that situation is going to come back and grab you. You cannot break through. You cannot change without God's Word. The only thing that will change your life this morning is the Word of God. That's the only thing that will change your life. Nothing else can change your life. Your willpower, your mind power, your positive thinking, your positive thinking books you read, your positive whatever it is, don't change nothing. Only the Word of God and the power of God changes things in your life. Amen. But see, the devil's got us deceived this morning. Well, you know... I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read this positive thinking book, and you know I'm gonna will my way out of this situation. No, you ain't. That's why AA and NA really don't work, folks. That's why. Praise God. Oh glory, hallelujah. Let me let me get this like I want. AA and NA, listen to me. If you follow the twelve steps like you're supposed to follow them, will lead you to Jesus Christ. Just because you come to Jesus Christ. Don't mean you're going to be free of that thing until you start speaking His Word over that thing. Right, Listen to me. Listen to me this morning, right, right. So, So you can work the 12 steps and praise God for the 12 steps. I've been through the AA. I've been through the NA. I've been through all that stuff. Listen to me. But until I got born again and accepted Jesus as my personal Savior and I got in this Word and started reading this Word and that Word got down in my heart and my, the, the meditation of my heart was the Word of God and every word that come out of my mouth was what God was saying, that's when change took the place in my life. Praise God. Y'all have heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. There's some new people in here. Praise God. You can take a hog. And Mark likes hogs, don't you? <laughs> hey, you can take a hog and you can, oh, praise God. You can take him out of that uh, hog pen and you can take and pressure wash him. You can clean his ears up. You can take his hooves and clean them up. You can put some perfume on that rascal and you can even put a ribbon around his neck. But the minute you let go of him, you know where he's going? To the he's going right back to the mud pen. Why? Because even though you changed his appearance, that nature had never been changed. Woo! You've got to change your nature this morning, folks. Even though that pig looks good right now, just a matter of time before he's going to run back to that hog, hog pen. <laughs> Praise God. Good stuff, good stuff. You take it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You take a mule. Let me get this now. You take a mule. And you get that thing ready, and you take him to the racetrack, and you light him up with all the other horses, and you can get him ready, and he's ready to go, and they ring the bell, you know what that deal's going to do? He's going to sit down. <laughs> Why? Because that's his nature. Until you can change that mule into a racehorse, that mule's always going to be a mule. Until you can change yourself, hallelujah, into a man, a man, son or daughter of God, you're always going to speak the kingdom of darkness in your life. You've got to learn to speak what God speaks in your life. That's when real change is going to take place in your life. You've got to speak it all the time. Not just when you come to church on Sunday. You've got to speak it every day, all the time. But see, if you ain't never in the Word, guess what? You don't know how to speak it. You don't know how to speak it. Praise God. See, God has got, you got to start giving God the glory for everything that's happening in your life. If not, then you're still sitting on the throne of your life. You still sit, you, you, you will not let God sit on the throne of your life. That's what you're saying. God, I'm not going to let you sit on the throne of my life. I'm going to sit on the throne of my life. I'm going to go to church on Sundays. I'm going to get a check by my name in heaven. And that's, uh, and, and that's going to be good enough. You are lying your breath, thing. I'll go ahead and say you are lying your breath stinks this morning. Because that's a lie from the enemy right there, folks. Listen to me. You will not submit to his authority. And as long as you don't submit to his authority, you're never going to have the power you need to operate in the fullness of God. 
Oh, you can have a form of godliness, but you ain't going to have no power. You can come to church and get your name on the road, but, but you ain't going to have no power. You can say I'm a member of our Father's House, uh, 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 our Father's House Ministry, but listen, you ain't going to have no power in your life to change who you are. It won't be long if they tell you, yeah, you come up here and join the church. Last time I've ever seen you. Why? Because you come in here and got to feel good. You come in here and got an emotional rush. You felt the Holy Ghost moving. I'm going to make this live in a minute. And then, and then when you walked out the door, you left the Holy Ghost in here. You didn't take him with you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know where I'm at. See, it's your words that cause the power of God to cause real change in your life. It says we're to agree that thing's going to be done to you. Amen. I don't want to agree with you. I want you to agree with God. Amen. See, we're talking about words and how they affect the anointing on your life this morning. We're talking about words and how they affect the power of God on your life and how they affect the presence of God on your life. See, if we're speaking the wrong things hallelujah, in our life, then we're going to get the wrong things out of our life. You have to understand that words create this morning. Wow. Mm. Whatever you're speaking, you're creating. Wow. Let me make this live. Over in the book of Genesis, you don't have to go there. Over in the book of Genesis, when God was creating all of creation, in verse 3, God said. In verse 9, God said. In verse 14, God said. In verse 20, God said. In verse 24, God said. In verse 27, God said. God said. In verse 28, God said. How do you think God created this universe? He spoke it. And when you're speaking the wrong things in your life, you're creating the wrong things in your life. Listen, quit saying, hallelujah, you are paying my debt. That's why your neck hurt. <laughs> you go, That's why your neck hurting this morning. Because you keep telling somebody they have pain in your neck. <laughs> See, what you've done when you said that, you created that pain in your neck. Teach, teach. That's good. I laugh so hard I about that. Guess what? You get ready to fall out. <laughs> and ain't nobody going to be able to save you. Why? Because you created an early death by what you spoke out of your mouth. Uh -huh. My feet are killing me. Uh -huh. Good Lord. Uh -huh. See, folks, we create what we speak out of our mouth this morning. See, what you're doing when you speak these things out of your mouth, you are designing your life with whatever you allow to come out of your mouth. Listen to me. How do you want your life to be designed this morning? You're designing your life by the words you speak out of your mouth. It's, that's why it's so important that we speak the right words over our, our, our marriage. That's why it's so important we speak the right words over our family. That's why it's so important we speak the right words over our, our finances. Well, that's why it's so important we speak the right words over our employment. Quit saying, I don't have enough money. Quit saying that my kid ain't never going to straighten out. Quit saying that my marriage is on the rocks. Get in the Word of God and say, well, what man is doing together, let no man separate. Amen. Praise God. I like this word. I don't know about y'all, but I like this word. See, there's people in churches all across America this morning, and they know nothing about the power of God in the words of their mouth. They know nothing about the anointing of God. They still live by the do good, get good uh, checklist instead of realizing that, that the God of the universe lives in their lives and lives on the inside of them. See, the more you submit to His authority, the more you realize the power of God in your life. How do you submit to His authority? By learning what He says. When you speak what He says, you're speaking His authority over everything. Amen. Praise God. See, the Holy Spirit brings the anointing of God in our lives. That anointing, the power of God, the presence of God on our life is the most precious gift we can ever have. That's the most precious thing we can ever have. But what we're doing is we're negating the anointing. We're negating the power of God in our life. We're negating His presence in our life when we speak opposite of the Word. What you're doing is you're dead in what He's doing in your life. It would be like It would be like if I give her this right here, see, she ain't taking it. That's where you are today. He said, here's my anointing, but you ain't taking it. Here's my power, but you ain't taking it. Here's my presence, but you ain't taking it. Lord, praise God. Now, see, see, now I'm going to put it back in my pocket. Listen to me. 
Now you don't understand what you did the next time I had she got it quick, boy. She got, that's what God wants us to do this morning, folks. He's saying that I've given you a gift. He's saying, take it. Take this gift I'm giving you and use it for your benefit. Amen. Praise God. Keep it, Tracy. <laughs> you notice I pull out a hundred. <laughs> Listen to me. He has hurt anyway. That's right. But see, if the enemy can cause you to speak the wrong stuff, you will never exercise that, that anointing in your life. You'll never exercise that power in your life. You'll never exercise the, His presence in your life. You speak the exact opposite of what God wants to do in your life. See, we ain't understood this morning that the anointing is a gift. We still talk about the anointing of God while I got born again, but you've never tapped into the Holy Ghost. Well, I got born again, but you've never tapped into His power. You've never received the gift that He's given us that goes with that salvation. You're still trying to operate on your own willpower and the way you think about it. And the reason you're still trying to operate on your own willpower and the way you think about it is because you, you are rebellious. You don't want to line up with the Word of God because it means you're going to have to change the things you've got going on in your life. But the thing about it is, if you'll accept this gift, listen to me, the Holy Spirit will make you where you want to lay it down. Amen. The Holy Spirit will make you where you want to turn from that thing and go the other way. Right. Right. Glory be to God. See, the presence of God in your life, the anointing that He gives us, or he, he, that He puts in you or on you, will handle any kind of need you have in your life. It will handle any kind of situation you have in your life. Listen to me this morning, folks. We're always coming up short in life, and it seems like the God of Word never works in our life. It don't operate like it's supposed to be. It's because you won't take the gift this morning. It's because you refuse the gift of God this morning. You think getting born again is all there is to it. That's the first step, folks. That's the first step to get you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But how do you start prospering in the Word? How do you start prospering in, in, in the things that God says you can have? How do you start prospering in His, in his promises? By speaking His Word. You've got to start speaking His Word. You've got to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Listen to me now. You've got to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you've been saved. Yeah, you've got a ticket to heaven. They can't nobody pluck you out of Jesus' hand, but you're going to live in hell the whole time you're here on this earth. That's right. But He's saying if you will receive the Holy Ghost. He told the disciples to wait until I send the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. Don't you think them disciples wasn't saved? You don't think them disciples didn't believe in Jesus? Oh, they believed in Jesus. They, they seen him work miracles. But he said, you wait right here until I send the Holy Ghost to you. What's the Holy Ghost for? The Holy Ghost is to empower us to operate in his fullness. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. It's to empower us to operate. In other words, it's for us to get some heaven on this side. Glory to God. It's for us to get victory on this side. It's for us to say, that thing that I've been dealing with for 20 years, ha! By the power of God, I ain't dealing with it no more. Amen. But you can't say, man, that thing's tempting me. Man, I can't get that thing off my mind. Man, I just can't help it. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. Guess what? You ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. Praise God. See, if you ever understood these, the gift that God has given us, you'll understand that the excess of these gifts, this is how they come. They come through the words that proceed out of your mouth. The most important thing you can do as a Christian this morning is speak and agree with God. When you do this, it will give you the ability to operate in all of His fullness. Why do you, why you think you see all these churches with defeated Christians in them? We ain't having defeat in there. I'm going to go ahead and give y'all a new flash. We, we, we ain't living defeated in here. We're going to live on top in here. We're going to live in the fullness of God in here. But these churches are... Have you ever been to church and somebody... And I have to say this to people when I invite them to this church. I know when you hear the word church, you... Oh, Lord. Here he's inviting me to church. This ain't like that, folks. This is a Holy Ghost filled temple right here. This ain't, this ain't church, 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 church. This is the Holy Ghost filled temple right here. This is the house of deliverance right here. Praise God. I tell them, come one time. Just, just give me one time. That's all, that's all I'm asking, one time. And you'll be hooked. 
God said if we'll catch him, he'll clean them. <laughs> yes, Lord. See, this power is the most precious gift you have in your life. But see, you've got to protect this. And you, we ask, how do we protect this? You get so involved in the Word of God, you get so involved in His plan for your life that you train yourself to only speak what He speaks. I know it sounds like I keep repeating myself. You keep saying the wrong things. I can get around you and listen to you. A lot of us in here right now speak defeat more than we speak victory in our life. Amen. See, when you, when you speak with a double tongue, it weakens the anointing on your life. When you speak with a double tongue, it, 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 what it does, it sucks the power out of your life. In other words, the power of God has been given to you as a gift, but when you speak negative or, or, or critical or judgmental, it sucks that power out of your life. You don't have the power that you need in order to overcome the thing that you're dealing with. And the devil knows this. He's going to put what he needs to in your face. He's going to try to tempt you with what he needs to tempt you with to get your eyes on something or to get you listening to something that's going to bring that thing to fruition in your life. And now you're not speaking the word of God. Listen to me. If you listen to Christian music all the time, you're going to sing Christian songs. If you listen to the Boo Scoop Boogie all the time, you're going to sing Boo Scoop Boogies. You, you said, listen, about uh, my wife left, my dog got run over, my truck broke down. You'll be singing that, and guess what? You'll be sitting in the house by yourself. You won't have no dog, and the truck will be in the shop. <laughs> See, one of, the, one of the ways we do great damage in our lives or to the anointing is we have a mixture in our life. <laughs> See, you can't come in here on Sundays and tell me how much you love God. You can't come in here on Sundays and, and shout and, and, and raise your hands and praise God and then go out here and live like hell the rest of the week. Amen. See, you have a mixture in your life. Right, right. This mixture is killing the gift of the anointing. This mixture is killing the gift of the presence of God in your life. This mixture is killing the power in your life. That's what's sucking the power out of you because you have a mixture. You come in here praising and singing to God when we're in church, and then you go out and you gossip. You talk about people. You run people down. You speak doubt in your life. You speak unbelief in your life. Yeah. Praise God. Glory to God. See, we either going to be for God this morning or we, and serve Him with a full heart or you need to go on and live like the world this morning. But if you try to do it with a mixture in your life, you're never going to enjoy this Christian life. You're never going to walk in the fullness of God and you're never going to get everything that God's got in your life. And you're going to live a life of defeat because you don't know how to speak the Word of God in your life. Listen to me. We need to get rid of that mixture. We'll come in here on Sunday. I'm going to make this live. Listen to me. We'll come in here on Sunday and we'll get caught up in the music. We'll get caught up in the Holy Ghost. We'll get caught up in the Spirit moving. And we in here saying the right things. And guess what? Your life is wonderful. Your life is wonderful while you're in here. Your life is great while you're in here. But the minute you walk out that door, listen to me. Listen, while you're in here, everything's flowing. The Holy Ghost is flowing. you singing the right things. you saying the right things. you hearing the Word of God. And, you, and, 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 and you've got all these uh, 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 good things going through your spirit. But the minute you walk out that door, before you can get to your car, boy, did you see the way Mr. P was dressed this morning? Come on, you, you ain't dressed bad. I'm just using you as an example. Did you hear what so-and-so said? What you're doing is when you speak these things, what you're doing, the negativity just comes flooding right back into you. And everything you've got in here on church uh, for an hour or two we hear on Sunday morning, you lost it before you even got to your car. That's how the devil works this morning. Can I finish this this morning? Yeah. Praise God, I'm going to. See, we have to get consistent in saying what God says, not just saying what we want to say. If you ever going to live in the fullness of God uh, that, that God has for you, then it's going to require that you get on board with God. It's going to require you getting in line with God and learn how to speak God's Word out of your mouth. This is how you create a blessed life. Listen to me. It, 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 praise God. Hear people say, well, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Good Lord, you tell them a lie and you go and you die at the same time. Listen to me. You've got to learn to speak what God speaks out of your mouth. Learn to say what God says, no matter how impossible the situation seems to be. You say, Pastor, you don't understand what the doctor said. 
I don't care what the doctor said. I know what God said. Amen. You've got to agree with God. You can't hook up with that doctor and agree with what he's saying in your life. You've got to say, well, you know, Doc, that's good, and I appreciate you. I appreciate all the years you went to school, and I appreciate what you said, but you know what? I ain't going to set that. I'm going to say what God says in my life. Amen. Praise God. See, this is the most important thing you can ever do for yourself, for your family, for your friends. Y'all catch this? For your enemies. Speak the Word of God. Speak the Word of God in your enemy's life. Because eventually that thing's going to take hold. Listen to me. See, that when you speak the Word of God, it, it benefits everyone that's connected to you, everybody that's around you. But more importantly, it benefits the kingdom of God. And it keeps the kingdom moving forward. You get a bunch of Christians that are saying the wrong things, the kingdom stops right there. That's why most churches ain't built on kingdom teachings. That's why they're built on social club teachings. That's why they built on uh, uh, going, going up here to see my good old buddy on Sunday morning. Instead of having the mindset, I'm going to receive the power of God and I'm going to beat the devil down today. I'm going to break his back today. The devil don't have no place in my life. He ain't got no place in my family. He ain't got no place in my finances. He ain't got no place in my health. I got victory through Jesus this morning and I'm going to receive the gift that he died to give me this morning. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. See, what God wants us to do when we read a promise in the Bible he wants us, hallelujah. He don't want to hear nothing from us, but God, I agree with that. He don't want to hear you say, well, I don't see how that's going to work. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that's going to work. See, he wants you to say, he wants you to get that promise. He wants you to meditate on that promise over and over and over until that thing gets down in your spirit. That's when it's going to become a reality in your life, and that's when you're going to see change in your life. The reason most of us never experience the promises of God is because the only thing we ever do is service read the Bible, and the only thing we ever do is get the Word in our mind, and it never goes down into our heart until it gets into your heart and comes back out of your mouth. No, no change is going to take place. You're stuck right where you are. Amen. Praise God. See, you have to spend so much time with God. If you read something in the Bible, you just say, you just go ahead and say, well, if the Bible said that, I believe that. If the Bible says that, that's what I can have. That's when you'll become an unstoppable force for God. That's when you'll be an unstoppable force for His kingdom. And because now you're a living Ooh, you're living the Word of God. You're walking the Word of God. You're talking the Word of God. You're acting the Word of God. Everything you say is the Word of God. And that's when you're creating the Word of God for your life. That's when you're creating His plan for your life. That's when you're walking out His plan for your life. When you get in His Word and you spend so much time with God that you become one spirit with God and now you understand, hallelujah, that the same fruit Jesus is getting, that's the same fruit I'm getting. Praise God. Glory to God. See, it might be impossible to man, but all things are possible with God. Amen. See, we read that, but do we really believe that? No. Do we really believe that? We read it and let it hit our mind. And that's as far as it ever gets. And before you can get through the next hour, you're, 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 you're saying what the devil wants you to say. Because you still think it's impossible. You never believed the Word of God. Yeah, you read it. But you never believed it. You never got it down in your heart. Listen to me. You've got to have faith in God or you've got to have the faith of God. And you will see the impossible in your life. But you have to get yourself to a place where you believe the Word of God to the point where you're speaking it over every situation in your life. Don't matter if it makes sense or not. Don't even matter if it makes sense. Speak the Word this morning. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 21 that death and life is in the power of the tongue and ye shall eat the fruit thereof. Everything that's happening in your life this morning is what you're speaking out of your mouth. Everything that's going on in your life this morning is what you're speaking out of your mouth. Quit speaking that mess out of your mouth and you'll see change come in your life. Start speaking what God says. Start speaking what the Holy Ghost says. Start letting the Holy Spirit condition your spirit and adopt God's plan in your life. Everything you do, acknowledge Him in every, every, every decision you make. And the Bible says He will direct your path. It says trust the Lord all your heart, all your mind and all your strength and all your soul. Everything that's in you trust in God this morning and he said I'm going to make your way prosperous. Amen. We're victors this morning folks. <laughs> We've already won this morning. He gives you a gift if you receive that gift this morning. Have you received the gift of God this morning? Are you still saying well 
You know, it might be for him, but I don't think that's for me. Listen to me this morning, folks. It's time that you got understood that God loves you this morning. And it's time that you received everything he's got for you this morning. But the only way you're ever going to receive it this morning is by speaking what he speaks. You can't get it by speaking, negating everything that he's doing in your life. See, we'll sit there and we'll pray, 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 and nothing ever happens. Why? Because before you can even get out of your prayer, you done said the opposite of what you just prayed. It's time, folks, that we start speaking life and not death. It's time that we started speaking health and not sickness. It's time that we started speaking blessings and not curses. It's time that we started speaking hallelujah, prosperity and not poverty. He says, amen, praise God. See, see, a lot of y'all have a hard time believing that right now. You've got to receive the gift this morning. When you receive the gift and start speaking his words, his anointing is going to come on you so strong, he's going to give you the power to do what you need to do in your life. But it's never going to happen until you learn to speak the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Now come on. Praise God. Y'all understand that Word this morning? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me this morning, folks. What kind of words have you been allowed to come out of your mouth? What have you been speaking out of your mouth? Do you say that wife, that husband, that child, oh, they ain't never going to change. They ain't never, never going to change. They always going to be like that. Guess what? They ain't never going to change. You have authority as a, as a child of God this morning. You have authority to change the situations in your life this morning. But you've got to learn to speak to change. You've got to learn to speak what God speaks, and that's when you're going to see change in your life. You're never going to will stuff out of your life, folks. Only through the power of God can you be victorious. Amen? Amen. Amen. 